Hello, our player is moving, but is he really? Look, he's like standing here waiting for a bus. Nothing is changing, the animation is idle, right? How to change animation from one to another. After this lesson, you will know how to do it and how to use AI to help you with that, even if you do not know how to program, okay? First, we need to add a new animation to our sprite frame. So when we choose the animated sprite 2D, we need to attach a new animation. As you can see here, we have a box of all animations that are attached to this animated sprite 2D. And now let's call it, for example, walk. So we want to change from idle to walking. And then we need to choose what? We need to choose the asset that we are using. Then we need to change the settings here. Here, like this. And now this is movement, right? You can choose more than one if you click left click here and then shift. So I've got all frames at once. And as you can see, let's improve the FPS and let's play it. He's moving, right? But the problem is that this is the animation that we start our game with. That's good because he's just standing in one place. But hey, I want to walk, right? So I need to change somehow from this to this from within the code. Based on what? Based on if the player is moving or not, right? So as you can see, it happens when I am using my keyboard, right? And this is detected in this place. So probably I need to put it somewhere here. But because I do not know how to program, right? Let's assume this. We're gonna go here to AI and ask her. I would like player to have different animation when he's walking. Change animation from idle to walk. So I specified what that I want to change from this to this. And well, I can just copy it and paste it here. It knows how to answer. Remember why? Because in previous lectures, we were talking with it and we made sure that we gave it a context, right? So we gave him all the details about our project. So I send it what? Scripts, right? I send it our tree, right? Using the scene export here. So I gave him all the context. So he knows what's going on here in our code now, right? And that's why he could precisely do that. Try to, as an exercise, ask it without, you know, the talk from before. You will notice that the difference in answer will be tremendous. So now when I play it, as you can see, he's walking. That's great, but he's only walking towards the, them, right? And when I'm moving backwards, he is like, you know, not, not changing direction. So, hey, I don't know how to program, so I'm gonna ask. That's great, but my player do not face where I'm moving him. Can you make him face towards where he moves? Okay, so he's going to do it. Let's copy it. Let's see if it works. As you can see, it works fine. And wow, isn't it cool that AI did such so much stuff for us? But now I want to even know AI did everything for us. I want you to understand a bit of this code because it will be easier for you if you understand the process of this thing. Otherwise, you will have problems asking good questions to AI in future. OK, notice that this part is like place where the change of direction of the player happens. Why? Because we check here if the direction changed. OK, this is like, let's check. And if it's left or right, this thing is going to be executed, OK? Which means that we send to the computer that we want to move this guy with the velocity. So how fast this thing? And then here is the thing that it attached. It said that we want to access animated sprite 2D. But where is that? Why there is dollar here? Notice that from the player script, we can access, for example, this node this way. Bam. As you can see, bam, OK, and now we access something what is called play. When I hit Ctrl plus left button, you will notice that we jump to play and it says that it plays the animation with the key name. OK, and this is one of many things that can this animated sprite to do. As you can see here, you have something what is called methods, which means what can be done with animated sprite to And here we have properties, which means what can we change regarding how it, for example, looks. So for example, here we have something what is flip that we're going to talk soon about. And when we go back to our script, notice that we invoked, which means that we accessed the play method that was written by Godot creators. And this thing just changes this to this. And 
it works because somebody made this method do such thing. You don't know how it's done that it changes from this to this. It just do it, right? And it's very important to notice what I just said. You don't know how it's done. It's done by somebody who created this method. And you see, here we have got something like flip the sprite based on mo movement direction. And well, it does it by doing something like that. Notice that we've got here in the animated sprite something like this. Flip. So you can see I can flip it. So, yeah, okay, that's cool that I can flip it. But how it's done here? We just change the value from true to false or false to true. But why in this particular place? Why should I check if direction is like this? I do not care. Notice that when I get it here and I will say it like this. Can you change it into separate function? and make itself descriptive. You see my point so why it's very important to understand that you don't need to really understand each instruction when uh, when you are trying to achieve something. So I am taking this into our code. So instead of having this right we have got now this function and it says flip the sprite based on what movement direction. I do not care how it's done. It does the job. Okay? And we just like moved this entire code that was here, right? right? It was here, right? So we moved it outside into this function. And now I just don't care. Just please flip the sprite based on the direction that I sent here, right? I sent direction. I do not care. Does it do the job? Yes, it does. That's why when you ask AI for solutions and they work, you do not need to precisely understand sometimes how do they work. But there is a small catch. Things that we write here, they are not like super alleged, right? They are not like, uh, you know, good way of writing code when this code is going to get big, for example. There are many ways to improve this code. But when you are learning how to code, when you are learning a new tool, you don't need to have perfectly everything. To be honest, it's best when you just make your things so they just do not work. Why? Everything should work instantly and everything should be perfect. No, 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 no. You have to make mistakes in order to learn. Because you will notice that when you write code that is not easy to expand after you create your first game you will understand why you should do some things that many instructors are talking about otherwise you will just memorize some things and you will not know why you are using it and you will really feel like mm, you are not doing anything on your own right it's, it's like it's not you that was the person who invented this solution. You don't understand it, you are just using it and you don't know why. And that's why you also don't know how to go further with your game. Because every time you need to go back to the tutorial that you've watched, right? No, this is not a way of learning things. As I said in the previous lectures, mini projects, step by step. Now we are accessing, for example, this thing this way, right? because AI suggested it, but there are many other ways. You could, for example, put this using the control shortcut and access it from here. And then you can easily change this value to something else, for example. But really, these are advanced things. You don't need to know this now. For now, you should be happy because look, your player is moving forward, backwards, right? We are one step ahead. And try to do the same as an exercise to the enemy. That's only the lesson. And as always, if you have any questions, remember, feel free to ask. Have a good day.